Yo, yo, yo. Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practices Show. I know a lot of you that are listening to this podcast do a lot of planning. You're planning vacations, you're planning your business, but are you planning for the unexpected? Well, today I bring on a good friend of mine, Dr. Wayne Kerr, who I've known for a very long time, and he walks us through a framework of how to think and how to plan for the unexpected. It's a very important episode, so please listen up. I hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll see you soon. Welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. I know you're planning a lot. You're probably planning this year. You're planning probably a big case. You're planning what you're going to do in the next year, next two years. But what about planning the unexpected? Because in a world of dentistry, things do happen that we don't expect. And so today I brought on a good friend of mine, Dr. Wayne Kerr who's an amazing influence in dentistry, and he's going to be talking about the steps you can take to prepare for the unexpected. So, Wayne, thanks for being on, brother. I appreciate you. Kurt, thanks a million for hosting me. What a privilege and great thrill to be on the Kirk Barrett podcast. Whoa! Well, I don't call it the Kirk Barrett podcast for a lot of different <laughs> reasons, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's all about best practices, buddy. So um, this is a cool topic. You know, I don't have many people that talk about the unexpected, yet it happens. It happens actually more than we want to mention. And uh, you've had a chance. You've had an incredible career. I want people to know who you are. You know, I get a chance to see you. But if somebody's listening and they don't know who Dr. Wayne Kerr is, tell us, tell us your story. Well, thanks, Kirk. I uh, established a uh, small general practice in a small town uh, east of Atlanta in 1978 um, from a cold start before the days of computers, uh, social media, or advertising, <laughs> right? And uh, it, it was a struggle. Uh, it took a while to build a terrific practice, but we used my practice as an economic engine to build a better community in which to uh, live, grow, and raise my family. And uh, by by investing in my community, uh, by being visible, by being someone who who uh, was a community leader and contributed to the community, um, I basically uh, marketed my practice by by doing that and and built a, a wonderful practice. Uh, I enjoyed 32 years and retired in 2012. I continue to write. I have a website called Kerspeak. K E R R S P E A K dot com. And you can read my uh, more than 100 original blog posts there on practice management, life skills, and uh, stories of inspiration that are great for uh, uh, in service training and onboarding and even sometimes in the morning huddle. So I've written seven books in retirement, two on business, and, and uh, one on caring for the elderly uh, since I've been through that and I'm now elderly. And uh, I've written uh, four other books just on uh, stories of inspiration to, uh, to help people. Um, remind uh, ourselves that we're we're blessed, uh, we, we should live abundantly, and uh, we're well past the pandemic, and we need to embrace and find joy every day. So I have the gift of continuing to uh, to speak, to write, to lecture, and be creative. So that's who I am. Oh, buddy, you're, you're awesome. I'm, you're not slowing down a bit, you know, so uh, <laughs> still out there creating value for everybody else in dentistry. It's amazing. Now, uh, I, I always love to start here. Let's talk about the why. So you had our, our dear friends at Hinman put this together because they needed it too. So why, why is it important for me to plan for the unexpected? I think it's been said that wisdom comes from experience and we gained invaluable experience through a horrid situation that no one saw coming. I think as practices, uh, overcame challenges. They they were innovative. Dentists are 
entrepreneurs are. They develop solutions to overcome those problems. And I, I think that we think that, okay, well, that's done. That's gone. I send the rear view mirror. But, you know, what about what about tomorrow? How can we do something today that better positions our practice in the event of some future disruption? Um, how can we uh, better weather the next storm, whether it be, uh, uh, you know, a, a weather catastrophe, a, a tornado, a flood, a fire, whatever? Um, and I think it's important to learn from the lessons of the past and uh, and put together a contingency plan uh, to protect our practices from any future disruption. Yeah, it's so true. And I think I don't think you can plan enough. No. And as as this no. great profession has already taught, planning helps for a better outcome in about just anything. And so you've created, you know, five steps in order to, to be better prepared. Walk us through that. What's the first step? I think that any small business must practice fiscal sanity. If any business or dental practice is burdened by heavy debt or has marginal cash flow, or the cash flow is sporadic and uncertain and isn't isn't tracked and planned for, uh, that practice is in trouble. And uh, it's less likely to survive a future disruption than a, a practice would uh, with a more um, uh, sound financial uh, um, platform. I think yeah. it's also important, Kirk, that we live within our means. When we spend more than we make, we put the safety and the security of our families at risk. And we don't want to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're talking to people, like this is kind of a hard concept for maybe some dentists or, you know, the the, the population as a whole. That's just not something they're interested in, don't well, you think? We, we, we have to stop chasing those shiny objects we always want, never need, and most of the time we can't afford. Right. Uh, take a struggling practice, for example. If, if your practice is in, you know, a marginal cash flow, that's not the time that you invest in a 3D cone beam. You, you do that when you have the cash flow that enables you to do that. You have to exercise fiscal sanity. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And then you also have, you got to have your personal affairs in order. Define that. What's, what's personal <laughs> affair? Well, simply stated, uh, <laughs> tomorrow's not promised, right? So we, we need to protect our loved ones uh, by having uh, our personal affairs in order, have our will, living will and power of attorney uh, current and updated and make sure that our family knows uh, uh, important uh, things about the practice and and uh, our personal lives, uh, uh, the family finances, personal financial statement, um, you know, where the bank is, uh, where the safety deposit box is, uh, who's able to get into it, <laughs> where's the key, you know, things like that. You want to protect your your loved ones by by always having your personal affairs in order. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes just putting a list together of passwords alone. Yep. Now, I yeah. use I use LastPass. I don't know if anybody else yes. uses it, but it's a great software uh, that you don't have to really uh, do a whole lot. And if you have family members, you can actually create families within it. So if anything ever happens to you, you know, my family knows how to get into it. It's Perfect. all passwords. Everything is logged in there. You actually have links. So that's important too. Um, and then also these documents, like a living will, I'm like, everybody's got to have a will because if you don't decide, other people decide and the unfortunate, unexpected. And one more thing, nobody's really done this in dentistry yet, but I heard Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach say this years ago, like everybody's got to have a 100 day plan. And I'm like, what is that? And he said, in the event of your untimely death, there's a 100 step process. Day one, do this. Day two, do this. Day three. Now, I think it's a great idea. I don't know that anyone's ever put it together, but that's a good framework to think about when you think about putting your personal affairs in order is like, hey, listen, nobody wants to plan for this, but when it does happen, yeah. here are the steps. And so, and the truth of it is, is that, you know, in 30 years of doing this, I've been a part of some events that I'm like, oh gosh, this is terrible. And when you're a family member who is a spouse or a daughter or a son of somebody who's passed away, you can't think. It's really hard. It's a terrible, terrible situation. And the more that you don't have to think in those difficult times, um, I can't imagine it's going to make it any better, but it might make it a little bit more 
um, focused or your, your, your movement. So I think absolutely, you got to have your personal affairs in, in order as much as possible. And I, I love this one because this is, I'm not naturally an organized person. So I actually have other people around me that are a lot more organized. If you can't do it, have somebody else do it. You know, my financial guy, he like, he forces me to put all this stuff together. I'm like, do I really need that? He's like, yes, you do need this. Let's detail it and put it in a huge binder. So, um, I don't know. Any other thoughts you have about personal affairs, putting those in place in order? Well, very simply, a will tells basically who gets your stuff right. and who raises your uh, your children if you have children under the age of majority and you want to protect your loved ones by having those documents in place. The last thing any single parent wants is for the state to raise their children in foster care because they didn't name uh, someone to to do that in their absence. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Completely agree. And then number three, you have understand your business and your cash flow. Tell us about that. <laughs> if you look at the classic stages of business, um, survival is all about cash flow. You hope to make enough money today to be open tomorrow. You hope to make enough money this week to be open next week. You hope to make enough money this month to be open next month. Trust me, I've been there. Um, every early starting business goes through survival. And that, that is when you really have to understand uh, your, your cash flow. But when you get into uh, growth, which is to me the most exciting stage of business, because now as your business is growing, you're, you're, you're having to add capacity to the point where you finally reach your vision. And, and when you add capacity to increase uh, the volume of your business, you're taking some financial risks. Now, at this point in your business career, you've got a positive cash flow and you're banking some of it. And so now you've got the cash flow that means you can take on uh, a bank loan and add that $75,000 operatory or whatever it might be. But again, fiscal sanity. Um, I know every time that I borrowed 50, 60, $75,000 as I moved and moved and moved from one office to another to finally my third office and went from two ops to five ops, um, that I called my state farm agent and I took out a 10 year term loan um, for whatever the amount of debt was because if something were to happen to me, I knew then that there wouldn't be any debt on the practice and therefore the practice was still liquid enough uh, that it would be attractive uh, for transition and for, for new ownership. Uh, I basically transferred my uh, my financial risk to somebody with deeper pockets, an insurance company. And that's the purpose uh, of insurance. And, and then the other thing with, with cash flow, Eric, we have so many metrics from our practice management software. I, you know, it's a good thing I'm not a practice consultant because I don't know what to do with half of them. Okay, I really don't. The one metric, that I think everyone has to know is your break-even point. You have to know at the end of every day, when you look at your end of day sheet, did I make enough money today and put in the bank that I'll be open again tomorrow and I can feed my family? At the yeah. end of every day, you have to know you met your financial goals. And if you don't know that, uh, you're you're working blind and you're you're open to absolute catastrophe. Yeah. Before we hit the go button, you mentioned the great Jim Pride and yeah. I never really got a chance to know him, but yeah. I do have still some of his recordings and things like that. <laughs> and he always used to talk about the BAM, the bare ass minimum, which was exactly that. It was the number you needed to keep the lights on. And so <laughs> it's been 30 years and I still think of him when it comes to that. Like there's a number that keeps your practice. So any and I can't remember exactly how he said that. It's been a while since I listened to his stuff, but it's like, you got to keep some space between your yeah. BAM and yeah. your collections. And uh, a lot of people have referred that to as your true margin. Now, some people call it EBITDA, whatever, but at the end of the day, you got to have cash when it's all left over. And so I think, you know, ultimately you, know, you created business and I, you know, cash is to your business what oxygen is to the body without it both die and so you do need some some space in there. And I think do you you got to know your numbers in this whole process. Now, it's funny you bring up the 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 term life insurance. Now, I've never done this, but I've had some dentists in the past say you should have people look into this because the way I understand it is when you borrow against it, it's tax free, and it also still grows for its ultimate benefit. 
And so what I mean by that is that if you could pull out a million dollars or $300,000, it still grows at the rate, um, the way I, I mean, the way, again, I'm speaking way out of turn, but I do know this, Jim Harbaugh, as we're shooting this right now, we're on the heels of the national championship. And he put together one of the greatest compensation plans. It includes term life insurance that the University of Michigan pays. Now, at a certain point, he could pull that out and he can use it as cash tax free. Michigan pays, you know, the insurance he pulls it. And if he dies in some unfortunate incident, it still pays out at its full benefit to those who are their beneficiaries. Am I saying this right? Am I on the right track? And you could pay it back. <laughs> With, is it an interest free loan? I have no idea. Like, I have no idea. I've just, I've heard people mention it recently. Well, you're, you're actually speaking way above my pay grade. Um, I just did simple term policies to protect the practice. Now I did universal life to protect my family. Oh, okay. Uh, because it was important that if something happened to me, that my wife could remain a stay at home mom and not go back into the corporate world. So I used the two different plans for two different purposes. Absolutely. And I think you got to be insured at the right level. I meet with my insurance person every single year. And I, and she's like, you got up this one. I'm like, are you sure? I actually have a cyber security policy now. I'm you like, do. do I really need that? And she's yes. like, yes, you do. I'm like, oh gosh. Because without an expert, I would say no. I'm like, I don't need that. You know, I absolutely don't need that. So it is very important to be insured enough. So Sorry for the riff on that. I, I, and again, I'm speaking way out of turn um, when it comes to insurance uh, in that. Now, tip number four you have is build team loyalty year round. Take us into that. What does that really mean? I think one out of three practitioners are currently looking for a chairside assistant, a hygienist, or both, because we lost a lot of wonderful teammates uh, as a result of the pandemic. Um, and I think my point about positioning your practice to better withstand a future disruption uh, includes building team loyalty, establishing the kind of practice culture where your employees never want to leave you for some other opportunity. And I think that's so important that, that you continue to invest in your employees year round, that you provide them with continuing education for personal and professional growth, which obviously benefits the practice. Invest in their future by contributing to their, their retirement plan. Um, give them reasons to stay. Uh, um, have a, a conversation of core values. Why dentistry? Why, why this office? Uh, lead and work with integrity, for heaven's sakes. Treat your employees with with courtesy and respect, value their contributions, recognize them for their contributions. It's been said that once you meet the um, financial and 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 uh, security needs of an employee, what they most crave is is recognition. So so appreciate and recognize them for for what they're they're doing. Um, embrace open communication and delegate appropriately. But bottom line. Value your employees on a daily basis. Never take them for granted and build that kind of a practice where in spite of what disruption might come, they're loyal to that practice and to you. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more because when it comes to any business, your greatest asset is not your marketing. It's yeah. not your you know collateral. It's not how sharp you are. It's, it's the people around you. And if you can build an amazing team, they free up your time. They make <laughs> you feel better. They believe in you sometimes more than you believe in yourself. You really I think, spend, Jim, yeah, they I, do. I think, I think Dr. Pride called that business nirvana where, where uh, you know, all you have to do is, is lead and inspire. You walk into the office every day and your team tells you where you're going and what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah. <It's> great. <laughs> I love that. And you're speaking of creating leaders who create other leaders. And that's that was a huge turning point in my career. I'm still not the best at it, but. I'm tired of leading and managing people while we still do that. Now I'm heavily invested in creating leaders that create leaders that create other leaders. And yeah. I'll tell you the compounding effect. And as number one, they solve problems and they lead people in a way that I could never do it. It's too hard to take all this responsibility on your own, but uh, the loyalty factor is huge. If you can have people that are bought in, that believe in you and you reciprocate, um, and they can trust you. I think it's hugely important. It's one of the most important pieces to enjoying a long career in dentistry. And I'll add one more thing. I say it all the time. We, 
We spend 30% of our lives, well, not you because you're retired, at this place called work. You know, wouldn't you want to enjoy going to work with some people that are loyal to you and you're loyal to them? Nothing beats it. So I don't know. Good stuff, buddy. And then lastly, you've got point number five, write a contingency plan to prepare for the unexpected. Let's talk about it. What does that mean? This is a great team meeting event, and it's not something that you do in an hour. I think you 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 do this over a period of time. But again, you 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 look at the issues that you faced. Uh, the challenges brought on by the uncertainty of, of the day-to-day -day business in the early pandemic. How did you overcome those problems? What did you put in place? What solutions worked for you? And then build on that. How can you better prepare your practice to withstand a future disruption? And I think, number one, clearly, you have to recover your data, right? And fortunately, that's so easy to do today. It wasn't back so much in my early days. I mean, I backed up my data on a floppy disk for a while, and some listeners don't even know what that is. But today we've got uh, remote servers we call the cloud. Uh, but without being able to recover your data uh, following a flood or a fire or some other disruption, uh, your practice is gone. Um, so that's number one. Number two, and this is kind of personal, three of my very close friends uh, died suddenly. Their spouses were professionals in their own right. None of them had any uh, knowledge of their uh, husband's practices, and they were left in a very, very bad place, Kirk. As we mentioned earlier, it's, it, it's hard enough to lose your, your loved one, your spouse, uh, but while you're going through that horrible process of planning a funeral, you're suddenly um, faced with uh, transitioning a dental practice you know nothing about. So I think uh, every spouse or significant other needs a working knowledge of the practice, they need to have software training, uh, know how to download key reports, have user access and passwords. That they need to know the names of the employees and the people that work there and what they do, um, things like that. But the spouse has to have some basic knowledge. Oh, by the way, the spouse absolutely has to be able to uh, have access to the practice um, uh, checkbook. Um, uh, that's so important that that the account be be joint. Um, I think. As we mentioned earlier, cash is important. So what cash reserves can you identify? Um, do you, you have equity in your home that uh, you could draw out with a HELOC? Do you have a life insurance uh, policy that, that's whole life or universal but with a cash value you can borrow against? Uh, uh, do you have an IRA or 401k and you're over the age of 50 and you're able to withdraw uh, money from that as, as a loan? Uh, identify your cash reserves and of course, my goodness, you can't file an insurance claim for lost equipment unless you have a current up-to-date inventory. And, you know, by the way, if you buy new equipment at Hinman or Chicago Midwinter this year or some other meeting, add that to the inventory so it's up-to-date, of course, right? Contact information. Put it on your cell phone because guess what? Landlines might be down in a flood, but cell phone towers are likely to be up. So who do you contact? I don't know, your insurance agent, your banker, your practice management consultant, um, uh, the, the um, your employees. I mean, you need to know how to reach these people and those numbers need to be on your cell phone, right? Um, can you serve your patients uh, with a disruption? Um, is there an opportunity for a practice merger in your community. Uh, talk to your local dental supply uh, rep about that, especially if your loss of practice is significant for months because of fire or something. Um, is there a doctor that works four days a week, like like I did, three and a half days a week? Can you lease their space for the ring, remainder of the week? Do you have a charitable clinic in your community like mine? Um, we were only open one day a week when we had our volunteers. That three-chair clinic was available four days a week. That could provide uh, a, a small practice with the ability to continue and survive a practice disruption. Um, what about communication with your patients and your pa and, and your, your team members? Boy, I could name a number of software companies off the top of my head. We have amazing software today and being able to stay in digital communication with your, with your um, patient family is so important to keep them up to date as to, to what is happening. Did you identify a broker in case of your disability or death? Or at least is there a codicil on your will? Hey, if something sudden happens to me, I you know contact the ABC company, sell the practice. 
We talked about having your will, your living will, your power of attorney up to date, and then identify available resources, local, you know, city, county, state, and of course, there's FEMA. So those are talking points uh, that can serve as a guideline for any team to sit down and write out this, this plan, what happens and what do we do in case we face a future significant disruption to our business and our practice? Amen, buddy. So well said. So well said. Now you're going to continue to do this presentation um, and beat the drum so that dentists are prepared. Now, Wayne, I want you to put a, give us some final thoughts on, you know, preparing for the unexpected. If I'm listening. <laughs> you're a great listener, Kirk, and a great podcast leader. Thank you. Uh, I think it's important that that all of us post-pandemic, uh, regardless of whether we're the head bottle washer or, or uh, a brand new uh, employee, we pause from time to time and evaluate the quality of our lives and our contentment with our work-life balance. Um, I'm very concerned that some dentists who are short-staffed right now and are working uh, too hard and longer hours uh, might burn out, and I don't want that to happen uh, to them. Um, so taking time to evaluate your quality of life uh, and, and your your just overall wellness is so important. And for some, that might be a weekend at the beach. For me, um, I live in the country. Uh, I have a beautiful backyard. I'm surrounded by hardwoods. I've got a beautiful patio and a deck and a, you know, a pool and a fire pit. And, and for me, identifying quality of life is sitting on my back porch uh, or poolside with a with a pad of paper in my lap, and I'm writing down uh, where am I spending my time, my money, and my energy, and am I happy with that? Is that congruent with who I am? And if I am not content with my life, Kurt, what is it? What can I identify uh, as the issue or or an issue which is preventing me from from embracing and loving life fully uh, every day and enjoying? Uh, life as I should as a healthcare practitioner and someone who who provides the the highest quality of dentistry in world history, who possesses skills that few people on the planet possess. What we do as a dental team is is unbelievable. We should embrace and celebrate that, and 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 take those steps to make sure that our quality of life and our balance is is healthy. As 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 our amazing. Um, inspirational speaker Zig Ziglar once said, and I, and I believe in this wholeheartedly, Kirk, and I'll, I'll close with this, but it's important that we learn from the past without living there, that we live and grow in the present. And more than ever, we look to the future with hope and optimism. My goodness, what a joy it has been for me to be part of your podcast today, Kirk. Thank you so much. Hey, pleasure's all mine, Wayne. You're a great friend, great influence. I Gosh, I want to have half the energy that you have <laughs> as I look forward to the future, buddy. So um, I'm so excited for you. Uh, and uh, if you're listening, please put these things together that Wayne has so yeah. eloquently outlined here. So I know people are going to want to find out more about where you, can you tell us, like if I'm listening to this, Wayne, where do I go? If I want to find out more about you and uh, follow your blog, give us, I'll put this in the show notes too. Yeah. So Give our listeners where to go after this. My web, my website is kerspeak.com, K-E-R-R-S-P-E-A-K.com. Uh, a lot of good resources on that uh, website uh, under the resources tab, books uh, that are outstanding uh, for your practice professional library. Uh, again, more than 100 original blogs on multiple topics. I think uh, you'll find a little something for, for everyone. And I invite you to uh, to read my blog. I post it on the first Thursday of, of every month. Just go to curspeak.com and click on the blog link. So um, what a joy. That's awesome. Buddy, I can't thank you enough again. Thanks for being on today. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Chicago. We're going to have a great time. You bet. So, you bet. Um, yeah, we'll stick around when we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for listening to the Best Practices Show podcast. It'd be great if our life just worked the way we thought it should. But sometimes <laughs> the unexpected does happen. So I'm telling you, make sure you prepare for the unexpected. Follow these five steps and uh, you'll be happy you did. So keep sending us suggestions for you guys want to see. We're going to keep lining them up. We're going to keep bringing it. 
We've got an amazing lineup ahead of us. So until we see you guys next time or you hear from us next time, keep watching or keep listening to the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. Thank you.